what's going on in the black box of our brains and how can we reach down inside our brains to stimulate and strengthen the neurons firing within. These are tough questions, but the answers from neuroscience are compelling. First, let me introduce myself. I'm Ruth Bozinski, a licensed psychologist and president of the National Institute for the Clinical Application of Behavioral Medicine, known informally as NICABM. Right now, new developments in brain science are showing us why our brain evolved as it did and how this evolutionary information can be utilized to strengthen our brain's capacity. But what exactly does that mean? And what kinds of life practices can have such impact on changing our brains? Listen as Dr. Rick Hansen, neuropsychologist, teacher, and author of Buddha's Brain, provides us with a whirlwind tour of the evolutionary history of the brain and how it developed the empathic capabilities it has today. talk a little bit about empathy and where empathy originates in the brain. Well, I think to step back, um, it's very useful uh, to reflect on how the brain or the nervous system broadly evolved over the last 600 million years uh, of time during which animals had a nervous system. And certainly there are pitfalls in getting uh, reductionistic about the impact of evolution, but the context is critically important. So, too, the biological context uh, for the brain, which constrains and enables the mind, is biological evolution. And during that long run, uh, a wonderful breakthrough was uh, in the development of relationship skills. If you think about it, uh, studies have shown, for example, that the brains of reptiles and fish are smaller per body weight than the brains of mammals and birds. Well, what's the one thing that mammals and birds do that reptiles and fish don't do? They pair bond and raise their young. And to do that, you've just got to be smarter. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're a squirrel trying to work it out with your mate, you know, who's going to watch the kids? Who's going to go get some nuts? You've got to, you know, you've got to have more on the ball. And as a result, the reproductive advantages of relationships help drive the evolution of the nervous system right there in terms of vertebrate evolution. And then similar breakthroughs occurred in terms of primate evolution, in which there's a direct correlation between the size and social complexity of a primate band and the size of the cortex of the primates in that species relative to body weight. And then when humans evolved, um, I kind of marked that with the advent of tool makers, which is to say around two and a half million years ago. Uh, and in the 100,000 generations since, roughly, the brain has both tripled in size and most of that build-out has had to do with social capacities uh, in terms of language, cooperative planning, the development of altruism, and, as you brought up, empathy. So, you know, it's been a long road to become the most social, the most loving uh, animal uh, on the planet. And inside our brain, we actually have three dedicated circuits for empathy. Uh, when we're empathic, we essentially simulate uh, what it's like to be another person. And uh, one set of circuits simulates the actions of another person. Uh, another set of circuits, uh, I'm defining the word, I'm using the term circuits fairly loosely here, but another set of circuits uh, simulates the emotions of other people. And a third set simulates the um, thoughts, broadly defined, of other people. Uh, for example, the mirror neurons, if you will, or, or more exactly, mirror neuron-like networks simulate the actions of other people so that we feel inside ourselves something of, what we would feel if we reached for a cup, say, when we observe someone else reaching for a cup. Similarly, another part of the brain uh, in the insula, which is in the center, kind of inside of the temporal lobes on both sides of the brain, we actually have two insulae, if you will. The insula tracks the internal state of our body as well as our deep feelings, our gut feelings, if you will. And uh, it also lights up in a resonant way when we see other people having those same emotions. So that helps us simulate the emotions of others. And then third, particularly based on the development of the prefrontal cortex and as it myelinates over, which is to say as insulation wraps around the uh, axons that connect the neurons to each other. Axons are like little wires connecting the cell bodies of neurons to each other. Anyway, as the uh, prefrontal cortex uh, matures 
uh, through adolescence and even into the early 20s, uh, the capacities for theory of mind develop, which are um, also an aspect of um, empathy for other people. The interesting thing is that increasingly with, with the kind of growing breakthroughs, really, and an explosion of knowledge in brain science about what in the world is going on inside the black box, you know, with that breakthrough, really, of information, we can, with growing specificity and control, actually reach down inside our own brains, for example, to stimulate and therefore strengthen the neural circuits of empathy. If people routinely tune into the internal sensations of their body, like through mindfulness practices like, you know, awareness of breathing or uh, things like yoga or even Pilates or, you know, really getting in touch with yourself while you work on your golf game, uh, that by doing that in a, you know, sustained and routine way, people can literally thicken the neural tissues of the insula and uh, thereby become more aware of both their internal state, but also, studies have shown, become more able to track the emotional state of other people. In other words, the capacity is, immediate, is, you know, is increasingly available to us to deliberately use our mind to change our brain, to change our mind for the better. Neuroscience really is taking us to a new place in our understanding of mind-body medicine. It's setting a new standard, and it's giving us the evidence for new approaches that we can use with our patients. That's why NICABM has created a teleseminar series, The New Brain Science, Compelling Insights for State-of-the-Art Practice. In this series, you will hear experts share exactly how health and mental health care practitioners can use the most recent ideas of neuroplasticity and neurogenesis in treating their patients. The calls are free. You just need to sign up. There you will learn about how we can change the wiring of our brains, the neurobiology of mindfulness, the brain plasticity and depression connection, practical neuroscience of happiness, love, and wisdom, how the mind changes the brain, and the neuroscience of psychotherapy. Practitioners all around the world have been listening to this series. Again, the teleseminars are free. You can sign up at www.nicabm.com forward slash new brain science or take a look at our blog at www.nicabm.com forward slash nicabm blog. We hope you'll join us. <music> 